Hey guys, it's Ryan with My Listing Club. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to easily optimize your CSS code snippets for your My Listing website and, and how to also organize them at the same time. It's, it's kind of a, a dual benefit here, what we're gonna cover in this video. Uh, and to do this, we're gonna use the WP Code Box solution. I just, I can't stress to you guys enough how uh, amazing this plugin is. It's 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 not affiliate speak, not sales speak or anything like that. I, I've got a post on why I switched to this plugin away from the code snippets plugin. Um, so like a lot of you out there, I started with the free code snippets plugin and um, it's, it's just pales in comparison to what WP code box can do. Um, not just from an organization standpoint, as far as organizing your script, your uh, snippets, but the optimization, the flexibility, the, the time saving, um, the ability to, to store everything in the cloud. Uh, it's just really amazing stuff. And uh, it's already super, super, super inexpensive already. It should be it should be much higher in price in my opinion, but it is what it is. And club members also get 25% on top of that super low price already. So I just really would recommend having a look at it. Um, and I'm gonna show you one of the reasons why in this video. So let's go ahead and get to it. Um, what we're looking at here is, is going to be the new starter site that I'm going to release any day now. Uh, and I want to show you what I did with WP code box to, to optimize the CSS for people right out of the box. So if we look here at the home page and we inspect that with our browser and we go to view page source, let's, for example, do a search for pricing. What we're looking for is the CSS related to pricing. And here, here is that CSS. And if we look at the back end, we go to WP Code Box and we look at our, here's our pricing pages um, CSS snippet here. So this mimics exactly what you're seeing on the front end, okay? Well, what you're seeing is that it is loading on the front, it is loading on the home page, the front page even though the homepage has nothing to do with pricing. So this is, this is an optimization uh, hit, performance hit. You've got to load this CSS on a page where it's not even used. Now you can use a plugin like Perf Matters, which I also highly recommend, um, but it, it's better in this particular case to use WP Code Box because you're ensuring it's not going to load. You're, with um, with plugins like Perf Matters that have this, or WP Rocket that have the unused CSS feature, you're you're really relying on it to know, you know, to be able to dynamically do its job and and hope it does, and, and it might in a lot of cases, um, but this way you're just guaranteed, you're assured to tell it exactly where you want it to load, and uh, yeah, highly recommend checking out this way, and I'm going to show you why. Here. So, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to say only load this pricing related CSS on the pricing related pages or elements. Okay. So to do that, instead of what the default typically is, and that's to load CSS everywhere. The next optimization level is to just load it in the front end. Obviously you don't need to load, uh, most of the CSS on the back end as well, because you're not really styling the admin pages with the CSS typically. So we want the CSS just to load on the front end. We're gonna take that a step further and we're gonna say only load the CSS on the pricing related pages and elements, okay? So you click on custom, change front end to custom, click the open condition builder button. We're gonna add one condition here that says current post is pricing. And we're just gonna type in pricing. So that's our pricing page. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, and then we're gonna add another condition. We're gonna say, or, or our page is, our add listing pages, because that's also where the, the pricing tables are gonna show up. Okay, so load our CSS if the page is pricing, the pricing page, or is the add listing page. So we're gonna save this condition. I, I think one, one little bug, I'm going to let the developer know, but the conditions aren't saving unless you make a, a quick little change to your CSS and then uh, it triggers the save button. So I'll let him know about that. But now our condition is saved. If, if we go back to the homepage page source, 
we're going to see on refresh that this completely goes away. There we go. It's gone. Now, you can see here that all of the CSS that we've got here, header, login, register, WooCommerce, submit form, all of this stuff is in there. So for example, let's look at um, Explore pages. So let's do a search on our home here for Explore. Control F, Explore. Let's actually type in Explore pages. That will bring it up faster. Oh, I lied. Let's do, there we go. Let's Explore page. So this is all the CSS loading on our home page for just styling our, our uh, Explore page. Okay, and we can get rid of that as well the same way. So let's jump back into WP code box. Let's change front end to custom. Let's open our conditions builder. Let's add a condition that says, only want to show this CSS if the page is our explore page. Okay, that takes care of that. Now, what if you have multiple explore pages? Um, you could do you could change it instead of um, that to to be uh, page URL page URL contains the word explore. So that way, if you have multiple explore pages, um, so they fall in the form of you know your domain name slash explore slash and then whatever the listing types that you're exploring, this will capture all of that. So any page that has the word explore in it, let's do that. All right, let's save and close this condition. Let's go ahead and do that uh, change here again to get that save button activated. So now our condition is saved. Let's go back to the home page. Let's refresh our home page page source. Boom, all of that, all of that's gone. So what you do is you just you just work your way through all of this, each of these. And this isn't going to slow down your site. This is going to speed up your site. All of these separate individual CSS files, snippets that are only loading where they need to load, okay? So that's new in this brand new starter site. It's the way I'm gonna start doing it. And another side benefit to doing this is it's just easier to see where everything is broken down rather than one large file. So a lot of people, if, if they're not using the code snippets plugin, maybe they'll go over here to their theme tools and custom code and then CSS and drop everything in there. So what happens then if you do that, you can't optimize it like we're doing right now as easily as we are now. And what if you have an issue? You have to hunt through this, this huge file, CSS file trying to find everything. Whereas with WP Code Box, you can just jump over here and say, hey, I'm having a trouble with my header. Let's look in the header. Let's find it in there. Or you can just toggle it off and see if this is where the issue is coming from or not coming from. There's just a ton of stuff that you can do with WP Code Box. Um, trying to think what else I can mention. Um, what I am going to do with the starter site, you know, right before it, it goes out, is I'm going to copy all of this stuff into what I call the master CSS file, and then I'm going to keep this file turned off. It's basically just going to be there for a reference, as I say here. This snippet should never be enabled. It's only there for reference. But what that's going to allow you to do, if, if for some reason you don't, want to keep WP code box around. I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to. It's included in the starter site. Then you could just copy everything and, and move it out of there real easily. Okay. Um, anyway, I, I hope this was helpful. I, I think I'm, I'm really excited about this, this to be able to go through back through all my business websites and really dial in the CSS and where it loads. Um, one thing I will mention is that, um, with my listing, one of the little bitty challenges is a lot of times they share the same elements across different things. So what do I mean by that? Um, how do I, what's a good example? Let me, let me show you like uh, a button, for example. So if I go under general here, I've got these buttons. So button two, the button two CSS selector this can apply in multiple areas. It can be, you can find it in WooCommerce. You can find it just in my listing in general. So it's a little bit of a challenge to, to pinpoint where you should conditionally load these. So in these cases where it's harder to pinpoint, uh, what you can do is just put this into its own 
uh, CSS file, if you're like, so for example, if you're unsure, like I'm not sure where these all show up, you could put these in just what's called a, whatever file you want to call it. So create a new snippet um, for CSS and just call it whatever. Um, I'm unsure. Drop your CSS in here and then just load it on the front end. And that way you're guaranteed to capture it everywhere. You don't have to worry about breaking anything. Um, but I would use that sparingly. So it's the things you're not sure of. That if something's not getting styling, then you know you may need to move it into there. But once you get all of this dialed down, uh, you could actually use this general one too, kind of like what I did here. So uh, general is more like things that I see that could apply site-wide. Um, so this could also be used. Um, as your holding place for everything that you just want to be ensured that loads. Okay, um, I hope this makes sense. And I, I really think it's there's a huge performance benefit to breaking, breaking out your CSS um, into individual sections, individual snippets here, and uh, doing that within WP Codebox. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Um, happy to answer them. And uh, Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thanks, guys.